Hey, how's it going? Rob here. Everybody loves a good upgrade. Upgrading your bike, yourself, your space, it can make you feel good. I've got a few things that I'd like to share with you today, starting with the new studio space. I've got my own studio. I can't quite believe it. After starting this channel a couple of years ago, e-bikes have skyrocketed. And I've been able to grow the channel. Currently, there's 34,000 e-bike fans that subscribe. So thanks so much for coming along with me. So yeah, I finally moved out of my spare bedroom and got a proper space. It's a small room, but it's a lot bigger than my spare bedroom that I was in before in my house. It also means that I can have a proper space with a proper theme to it. Oh, by the way, what do you think of the look? I initially thought it looked a bit dark in here, but I've grown to kind of like it. It's like a chilled pirate ship kind of bike bar. I'll be doing loads in here, bike unboxing, live shows, I've got a space for my park tool bike stand just over there so I can do maintenance videos and how to's and all that kind of stuff. So I'm super excited for the future of this channel. The new studio has been made possible by my Patreons and some of the companies that I've worked with on partnered videos. So a huge shout out to everyone that's been part of that. Oh, and I've also got some space for some extra camera angles so I can do some side profile shots like this one over here and some cool overhead shots. Speaking of overhead shots, it's a great way to take a closer look at some sweet new bike parts. Like these. So Olin's have hooked me up with some new kit to test on my bike. Stay tuned for another video on fitting these, but for now, let's take a look at this new fork. I've got a shock as well from Olin's. Now, to give a brief history of Olin's, they were formed back in 1976, uh, and they originally developed suspension for motocross. And within two years, Olin's had had their first world champion rider. And if you fast forward 40 years or so, and Olin's now makes suspension components for motocross, supercars, superbikes, and since 2018 have been making suspension products for mountain bikes. Oh, and they've got now over 300 world champion titles with Olin's products. So you could say they know something about suspension. This is the Olin's RXF 36 M2 fork. Now the fork's aimed at trail and enduro use. There's a choice of air sprung or coil spring and a wide range of travel sizes from 130 to 170 in coil and 150 to 180 in air with both 27.5 variants and 29ers and different offsets as options. The fork I have here is the 160 mil travel air version. It weighs 2.1 kilograms. It's priced at 1,250 pounds. So it's a pretty expensive fork, but hear me out because there's some cool features. It's got 36 mil stanchions and a stiffer redesigned crown over the prior version, which I actually used on my 2018 Levo Expert. Stiff, more burly forks, they're perfect for use on e-bikes and this is e-bike rated. The chassis looks and feels strong, burly, and it's got that classic black and gold Olin's look and all of the adjusters like this adjuster here everything's got like a really positive engagement and it just feels like a premium fork it's got these nice blue SKF wiper seals that sit at the top to match the anodized blue low compression speed damping dial just at the top of the fork which has got 15 clicks of adjustment and underneath just here is the uh, black high-speed compression adjuster that's got three settings and a climb mode for anyone that still uses that, I don't on an e-bike. So what about the damping of these? Well, it uses a reworked version of their TTX 18 dampening from their race fork, from the DH38 race fork. So TTX means it's got a twin tube architecture and the 18 refers to the uh, main piston size inside. And Olin say that that 18 mil piston has been optimized for trail use for better uh, small bump sensitivity. Now, most forks use uh, two chambers inside, 
one main chamber and a negative chamber. And a port between the two chambers allows the air to move between them. But these forks actually have a third chamber and it's called the ramp chamber. And in some forks, you'll adjust ramp up with tokens. So you'll add a little plastic token in that will reduce the air volume in the fork and it will give a greater ramp up at the end of the stroke. This can be useful to keep the fork from bottoming out on bigger hits but it can also have an effect on small bump compliance and also the initial stroke suppleness off the top due to you actually reducing the air volume in the fork. So instead, Olin's control this progression with this third ramp up chamber. With this ramp up chamber, you can control more of the feel of the fork, not just the final part of the travel. And you can do that without sacrificing the initial stroke suppleness as we're not changing the air volume in the main chamber. So in theory, the benefits of this mean that you can get a super dialed setup through the entire travel of the fork with not many compromises. For example, we could have a lower air pressure in the main chamber and then increase the pressure in the ramp up chamber for a really soft, supple initial stroke with good support at the end. And there's actually a ton of tune-in possibilities with this kind of setup. And that's almost the holy grail of forks, isn't it? You want that really nice supple off the top to take that chatter and to give you a real nice comfortable ride, but it also to be able to ramp up at the end of the stroke to stop your fork bottoming out. So in theory, you can do that on this. I've not tested it yet, but I'm really looking forward to sticking it on the bike. Other points to note, it's actually really easy to change the travel and the spring. You need to purchase a new spring, but it can be just dropped in and out quite easily to change the travel. So this is a 160. I could quite easily change it to a 170. And this is the air version. They do a coil version and it's easy to change from an air to a coil with that same process. So if you've got one of the older Olin's forks, you can also retrofit this new TTX-18 damper into those older forks as well. They just feel like solid forks, everything on them. It's all metal. It just feels like a very, very well built fork as you would expect for um, a, a fork in this kind of price range. Low speed compression, high speed compression on here. Air chamber, ramp up chamber. I'm really looking forward to getting these installed on my bike. And check out the shock. And again, it looks super nice. Build quality feels outstanding. It's got really positive feeling, high speed compression adjuster. It's got a climb mode again, low speed compression and adjustable rebound damping. Although you actually need a Allen key to adjust low speed compression and rebound damping. Now it's a metric shock. This one is 210 by 55. So it will fit in a few of my current test bikes. If I put it in the Levo SL, it'll actually increase the travel to 160 using this one. So I might pop in that and this to change the SL travel up to 160. I'm quite curious to try that. I might try it in the Focus demo bike I've got now at the moment. But this shock is some of the tech from their uh, TTX twin tube coil shock. But what they've done is they've combined it with a lighter and easier to tune air shock. So one of the benefits of air shocks is they're very, very tunable uh, versus a coil that is normally dictated heavily by the spring that you get with it. Now this one here weighs about just under 500 grams. I weighed it with these uh, little, <laughs> they're not gonna weigh much, but with the uh, zip ties on and it weighed bang on 500 grams. So you can bet that that's gonna come in about 499. So Olin's have also improved this shock over the older model. Uh, they had an STX air shock, that's what the name of it was, but with this, They've got improved internal lubrication, improved seals, and improved surfaces. So, some impressive looking forks and shocks. I'll be installing these to one of my test bikes. By the way, if you'd like to see a video on how to fit new suspension to your bike, let me know in the comments. And if there's enough interest, I'll make a video on how to do it. So now I've got this uh, new space in here, I can actually do these installs, which is super cool. And that'll be relevant to almost all suspension systems, not just these Olins. All right, thanks for checking in. If you like this, let me know with a thumbs up and subscribe if you wanna see more e-bike content, and I will see you next time. Take care.